guys, this is Christian Scott, otherwise known as Braddock. Um, I'm here for Bentano Audio, and we are continuing our series that is showing you guys how to make a trap check. I'm um, going through all the different fundamentals, and this week we're going to talk about saws and leads. So I pulled up um, a project of mine. Uh, this song's pretty much finished. Uh, I think I might change up the intro... Do a few things before I uh, put it out there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the drop here because I, um, I, have other people I've shown the track have really liked the saws in here. So. <laughs> it's going to come up right about. So, these are the saws. And they sound all choppy like that because, uh, going back to the first video, if you guys didn't watch it, uh, these are side chain compressions that um, I'm chaining to the kick uh, and the snare. You can see the ghost snare, ghost kick right there. Um, yeah, I, especially with these big types of sounds like this, I think this is really necessary um, so that your kicks come through. And I think it just gives it a nice bounce. I think it sounds all around better. So you should definitely go ahead and watch the first video if you haven't already. Uh, I would go over this in a little more detail. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on the saws here. So um, it's pretty basic here. Um, Let's see, I have a, um, I have an LFO on the pitch of both of these. Um, this one very, very small, it's 7, this one's at 31. So, um, they'll go, like, out of phase with each other a little bit more. Um, uh, this one, I saw a little more detune. You guys can go ahead and copy the, um, things here. I have it decay just a little so when it hits the new chord it um, is more prominent and you can hear it a little better. Um, there's like a small trick that I can't remember where it was. I heard it a long time ago from Flume in one of his interviews. Uh, I can't find that interview anymore but he, um, he was saying how one of the tricks that he uses a lot is that you can have a sound hit louder initially in the drop and then cut its volume back and you will still perceive it as loud and big as it was when you first heard it because of the initial impact is basically what he was saying and uh, I found that to be pretty true and I think it's pretty effective so just a small dip in volume makes it more manageable to mix um, I can pull it back a little more um, yeah, let's see. So you got these settings. I'm not using the filter here, so don't worry about the filter. Definitely using uh, white noise. That's for sure. Uh, I use white noise on these types of sound a lot. And then I also have a so I have an LFO on the um, on the volume here, and also on the volume of the white noise. So if you listen. turn off the side chain really quick so you guys can like hear bouncing in more full volume so so you can like you can see that uh, when this is at its peak is when it goes to the bottom so that means that uh, it's like yeah it's like a little bouncy stuff you can do it the other way if you want um, just know that when it's at the top, that means it's going to play at the the top of the range here, which is over here. Um, and so do that accordingly for um, 
make sure you're getting in the right rhythm that you want. So um, white doinks is really, really important in a lot of these sounds. It just really fills out the spectrum. It's going to especially make that high end uh, like sparkle that you really need to come through. Um, it's really important. I think I use it in almost every single saw drop I use. And then um, I have some distortion on here. Usually I, uh, for Serum I like to use uh, Diode 2 for these types of sounds, but I, know, I guess I was feeling Diode 1 for this one. So it's very light. It's at 5%. 12%, uh, 5% drive, 12% mix, but, and, um, like, I, yeah, I might usually do a little more on diode 2. Diode 1 can get really messy really quick. Um, you can also use soft click. Soft clip will give you very minor, uh, distortion sound. But, yeah, um, just really light drive, um, really light wet and this is just gonna kind of compress the dynamics of it while also bringing out the high end and uh, some of the some of the stronger mid tones uh, it also will like beef up the lower tones but we're gonna cut those out then I have chorus here the rate at 11 which is pretty high um, the low pass at 7,000 the rest of these don't matter too much I don't really mess with the depth as much but you definitely can um, yeah um, this is just to smooth out the sound so I can show you it's like this is what it sounds like normally and this is with it so so it kind of it kind of just like um, smooths it out makes it sound a little more and like spacey and takes out a little bit of the harsh overtones that the distortion put on and yeah that's mostly it for that uh, for the patch wise and then uh, let's put these back on before I forget um, then I have just saturation um, built-in stock plugin from here um, make sure that when you do this you make the output uh, mirror the drive here so this is going plus six make sure this is going negative six uh, this is gain staging that means when this comes in uh, it comes out the same volume it came in this is really important because oftentimes uh, you'll put a plug in like distortion or something and you're like oh that sounds great and uh, about half the reason can be just because it's louder and uh, you're like oh wow that's a lot bigger and stuff and it, it's really just louder so you need to make sure that they're the same volume so you know that the change you're making is actually beneficial and working for your mix um, and then I just cut out I cut out a lot of the high end on this one um, I have the the brick wall times four setting here um, to 144 that's probably about right uh, it's um, this is to leave room for the sub um, sometimes I'll even double this up just to make sure there's nothing going on here because these sounds like if I take this off I can show you like all right maybe not this one specifically but a lot of these sounds you'll have um, because of how you put the MIDI which I can show you the MIDI right now um, you'll usually I usually will put another octave below here and have it some have the the root notes in the the C1 range C1 to C2 range um, I didn't do it for the sound um, but like usually you want let me show you this one more time usually you want to uh, really stack these and spread out the chords and often that will lead to the uh, bass being really muddy and you don't want that you want your sub coming through clean um, yeah I think that's it for this that's all I did for this uh, just compression and a little saturation most of it's within serum uh, you can also put like a little reverb I did not put reverb on this sound 
because I want it to be bouncy and the reverb would kind of mess with that. Um, but I'll show you another sound that does have reverb. Alright, um, I'm going to go through this really quick. So I have a, uh, so this is the root, and then this is the fifth. So seven frets up, uh, I play guitar, it's like a power chord. Um, and then this is the third of the note. And so what I like to do instead of grouping it up like, like this, or like this is kind of the standard piano chord you'll see, what you do is you uh, increase this, um, you put this up one octave, and this makes a, you can do this in piano too, it sounds amazing. Uh, it really spreads out everything, it doesn't sound as cluttered, and it leads to a lot stronger chords. I, I like suggest you do that for these types of sounds. Um, and then I have the, um, let's see, that would be the sixth. But yeah, usually I put the sevenths, uh, sharp sevenths and stuff up here. I, um, I have like a melody line going with this chord progression, so that's why, uh, it's a little weird. And it's just a passing chord. Yeah, so that's, that's, um, that's usually how you guys want to do it. Just, uh, first fifth and then make your third an octave up and then if you're going to put your sevenths you want to put them after and stuff and uh, spread out your chords. I uh, usually I'll have another uh, bass note an octave lower too. Um, I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to mess with it because it sounds good. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the sound. Um, I'll go on to uh, another one. All right, here I'm going to show the lead on this this track. Um, this is a really reverbed out sound. Here you can listen. I I use these sounds like a lot, and not as much as I used to, but um, they sound really good for like kind of majestic style leads or you just want something they these cut through the mix like super well uh, i can show you really quick right? so like i can hear that clear as day uh it takes up a lot of the, the like the ends of the stereo spectrum so it comes through really well i See, am I on the right one? Yeah. Okay. So this way. <laughs> okay. It's throwing me off because I have the arpeggio on here. Okay. So uh, this is what I use. I guess I just modified um, the initial patch I use for this the saws. Um. I turned off the volume automation here, so don't worry about this. Just worry about the pitch bend here, and that this is a one one voice saw. It's really important that it's one voice. You can try four and stuff, but I think it for this sound that's like kind of a different sound. That's more uh, you can do like four and then detune it like super high, uh, and like you can get like the uh, called uh, they're, they're <laughs> can't remember their name. They're uh, they're a trio uh, from from France. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember it, and then I tell my editor. <laughs> but uh, and he's gonna he's gonna do a nice a little little overlay right here. But <laughs> so I just got a one voice square going through here with the pitchman. Uh, just a quarter note, and I curved it out a little bit. So not and made it a little asymmetrical. Uh, that's that's something I think is nice. It's just adding like a little bit of imperfection to that makes it sound a little more natural. Uh, then I use sine fold. I don't use this a lot, a lot but um, this makes a big impact on the sound here. So I can turn it off. So 
See, like, huge difference. So, uh, you definitely want distortion on these sounds. You can do distortion after for, like, pretty crazy sound out through this. So I hope I didn't hurt anyone's ears with that. But, um, if you, like, blow pass that out, I have a low pass filter on, thankfully. That would be kind of harsh without it. But that can definitely be used, uh, really effectively, too. But for this one, I want it more spacey, so I have the reverb will take out a lot of the harsh end uh, unless you completely turn off the, the high cut. And then I have a chorus uh, very lightly and uh, have some low pass filters to take out some of the harshness that the distortion puts in. And then 100% wet. Um, the size of the 28% not too big and a little bit of uh, pre-delay just the plate here uh, yeah and so this is this is the sound and then another uh, saturator I like to use this specific one on a lot of things I, use, I love putting this on bass I'm sure I'll show that whenever I do the bass section um, I love putting on subs I love um, putting on snares, just saturation, uh, very little bits of it can go a long way. If you do that in your mix, if you have lit little bits of saturation, little bits of distortion and stuff, you won't have to do as much excitement in the in the mastering section. And then um, I cut out all of the low end right here. All the one and I high passed it to about 7,000 and uh, this cuts out about the harsh high end leaving this nice clean midsection and uh, one thing that you could really do to make this stand out on your mix if it's not working is you see this peak right here yeah right right there you could boost this take the cue down So like that's about the pocket you'll see those are the fundamentals that they're peaking like that and if you boost them they'll come through the mix a little better and then what you do is you take this range the 984 and you can just cut anything or not cut like fully but like pull it back on any other element that's clashing with it uh, so like if the saws were making it kind of hard to hear just cut out that section and boost it on here and then uh, it will meld together a little bit and you can do that a lot uh, I, it's a good EQ trick is is bringing out the really defining characteristics of the sound by boosting slightly and then cutting on the other conflicting elements in those ranges so yeah that's, that's that lead let's see I think this is okay then uh, I just have this like weird arpeggiation on this um, like 64 and then some swing but um, yeah this is just a nice little arp I will show you guys so I used the same settings for the saw here and I just made it uh, you know I just used it's like literally the same thing except I turned off the volume automation and I uh, just added an arpeggiator on it and I put it up 12. And uh, that's a cool way to make your sounds really consistent and uh, make them sonically uh, harmonious is using the same like setup and sound stuff and just using it in a different context, uh, like arpeggiation and stuff like that. Yeah, it's the same thing, same as distortion settings as before. Uh, and then, as always, on all of these lead sounds, once again, yeah, you gotta put in, uh, you gotta put in your sidechain compression uh, higher on the kicks. I make sure nothing comes through. The infinite and the negative infinite here. That means when the kick hits, literally no sound is coming through for 
uh, about 49 milliseconds. Yeah, so that's that one. Um, let's switch over to a different project here. So here is another um, super saw. This is a more like classic kind of sound. Okay, so this is uh, I'll show you guys how to layer. Good, good thing to show you guys. So. So you hear it's not like crazy powerful on the, the high end. I think I even take out some of the high end. No, I didn't, but um, so I'll go through layer by layer and then show you what I have for the group settings. This is really important. So this is what this one sounds like all by itself. So uh, this one is like the main characteristic of the sound. So you guys hear this is what this one is sound. I really like this odd pass filter. I mean odd pass uh waveform. It uh has this really unique and like kinda harsh sound, so I like it a lot. Um another really popular one with these super saw sounds uh is hypa. Um for this though I wanted a more uh I'm not saying like Less detuned, even though this is very heavily detuned, but um, more solid, kind of metallic y synth is what I was going for here. So. I think it's pretty close to what I was thinking in my head. Uh, so I just, I just have a basic saw drop down here, and the detune, detune's at uh, 0.7. Um, this is a little higher in volume than this is. Some some white noise again. Uh, I don't think I have any really automation going on. I just have very slight uh, low pass to cut out the very high end of the white uh, the white noise. And um, I don't even know if that's necessary, but you probably not have this in here. It will be a little brighter. Um, yeah, then I have this odd pass. You can also just, just kind of experiment with um, different different waveforms like the the analog, spectral, other stuff like that. You'll get different sounds and more unique saws. This, uh, experimentation is really key here. You can also really mess with this. You can get sync or, or uh, you know asymmetrical stuff like that. Um, uh, really important in making unique sounding sense is experiment and then I got just a tube distortion on here um, I, I mess around with the distortion a lot too usually I will use diode to uh, about 23% drive and 30% wet uh, that's my standard default distortion when I put some distortion on something but it doesn't sound good on everything so just mess around with that um, tube Diode 1, Diode 2, and Soft Clip are my go-tos. And then if you want crazy sounds, go for the Linear Fold or the Sine Fold. And then got some Chorus on here. Chorus is gray on these sounds, 31% wet. Really high on the um, low pass. This uh, smooth out the sound. And then um, got 11 hertz. I usually this is a little high um, I usually do like higher I won't go higher than 11 Hertz because it starts to sound a little weird when you go like 12 or 13 but um and then for a lot of sounds I do lower like 4.04 Hertz sounds really nice it's a very light distortion you can also time with the BPM I, I don't um, then I just have a small plate reverb here um, if I, was to, I did this one a long time ago before the serum patch came out with the hall reverb, uh, I think I would do a hall reverb, uh, except that I don't think the hall reverb has any pre-delay, which is really important for these sounds, because pre-delay means it's the amount of time that it takes before the reverb kicks in. <laughs> so 
you get this space where there's no reverb coming in so it's just a clean signal and it's really important for these uh, these types of sounds because you want them to hit clean and then you want them to have a reverb tail so they're more spacious so you can hear to so hear like you can see the waveform dropping out uh, I don't even have any release on here sometimes I do um, <clears throat> yeah and then I have OTT which if you guys don't know you can um, get the free OTT plugin off of uh, X for records they put out a free plugin and it uh, imitates this setting it is a multi-band dynamics setting for uh, Ableton it's really really famous and really really awesome um, so I have this set on 36% so this is just really minor uh, I'm gonna show you what it sounds like at, at full full volume so here is what my sound sounds like without it so and this is a hundred percent OTT so it like really just squashes it and uh, adds this high end and then it gives this like cool metallic -y, uh compression to your uh, reverb tail so I don't use it that much this, this is really good on leads I'll probably show uh, another lead and I have the saturator again and then the EQ uh, just cutting out some of the harsher uh, like one 1.39 kilohertz range all right so then um, let me show you guys the second part of that sound so this is what this sounds like So you guys can hear that these sound totally different. And they're taking up different parts of the spectrum. And that's what you really want when you layer these sounds. Is to really have two distinct sounds that sound great together and add different parts that you can't get from one single synth. So this is really basic, just a square, and then really chorused, and then just a little bit of tube distortion. And that's all that this sound is. It's it's really easy. It's playing the same MIDI as this one is, so you can see the MIDI here. Uh, once again, I got those stacked chords for full sound. And then um, a really important part is the uh, pitch bend here. So I have the pitch bend mapped to uh, the, I like to do a 12 octave range. This is uh, usually I'll do negative 12 on one and then plus 12 on the other so I can have low control. But um, yeah, just this really minor uh, 16th note length and from uh, negative 12 back up to the original uh, like original pitch and then pitch it back down over the course of one uh, quarter note just sounds awesome uh, it gives it if I if I turn it off it will sound let's see really automation and you can guys hear this really quick. Oh, okay, never mind. I did not do 12. Uh, what did I do here? I must have done. Yeah, it just sounds great, so I definitely recommend doing that. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys how to. Uh, the settings I use for the the grouping of these tracks so make sure that the volumes are good um, just a little more uh, this is like an add on to the sound to add some kind of uh, chorusy sound on top of it without really saturating this um, so I have that one lower because this is the more defining sound 
And then I have this mix gel, um, just compressor setting. This is really great for uh, you know squeezing these sounds together. Basically, how how compression works to make sounds uh, come together is it um, it really just makes it so that all the dynamics are in the same uh, a little closer in range and the peaks are similar and the, it, it just kind of squashes it all together it's uh it's a little easier to see with visuals um there's a couple of videos explaining it if you guys want to look that up but yeah uh it's just the mix gel on here also there's some uh the glue compressor i mean that's what it does it uh you can use it. There's a few different settings on here that work really well. Um, this guitar lead solo is great for uh, different leads. Yeah, and then uh, I just have a I just have a utility there to mess with the the volume automation. I have this reverb does nothing. All it does, well, it, it does something, but it doesn't. Um, affect the sound in any way till the end here you guys can hear so it just it just adds this tail at the very end of the drop it's a good way to transition into your breakdowns and such and yeah so i just have this this simple uh compressor mixing everything together just can copy the settings if you want but it's a, it's a setting up here and then um yeah and then i have a what is this okay oh okay so i not only sidechained to the kick here i also sidechained to the vocal sample i have because often vocal samples are really hard to mix with uh these big super soft sounds so i actually have uh this compressing very lightly you can see very very lightly so that the initial hit of the vocal sample comes through and it's a little more audible so you can like if i take it off you guys can hear uh this sample so it's this sample so then you can hear the compression that's just like a little ducking just so that that can come through and uh yeah so yeah let's go on to another lead so this is going to be the last lead i show you guys um this is a little more in-depth one so this is uh this is the lead i gotta show you with context i showed this uh this beat in the last video Um, show you guys this is uh it's a little harder to make but it's uh it's awesome it's one of my favorite leads i've been using it a lot of my tracks um so this is like a uh quick kind of uh style lead here um you can see train using something really similar to this too um so you're going to notice right away when I show you guys this is that I have this chain here. If I turn off this chain, you will, this is the sound. So this sound is almost entirely, entirely just the processing. So that's great, so you guys can learn a bunch of processing tricks. So, uh, this is really simple. It's just a saw. I haven't turned down one octave, it doesn't matter. You can just put your MIDI one lower. Um, and then I have this really linear uh, decay right here. So, so the sound just drops down. <laughs> Sorry about all the messages. Uh, a lot of messages. Uh, <laughs> so then uh, the sound just drops really linearly uh, so you can hear 
Oh, whoops, let's turn it down. And then usually I have I have this on mono and always usually I put this up to like you can get up to like seventy or so. Let's see like how that sounds. Not sure if I like it on this one specifically. But uh yeah, I think I I think I actually turn now. But yeah, you can do uh it depends on the MIDI and stuff, but you can add uh glide here. Like uh, seventy milliseconds is really good. And then there's no effects. That is literally the whole sound here. And then so let's go on to the different uh different uh settings in uh post post effects. There you go. <laughs> figured it out guys, I figured the word out. So this one has no pre-delay at all. That means it's just immediately hitting reverb. It is 100% reverb here. It's at 90%. Uh, like I think I have an eco here. Um, it, is, I think it makes it a little, little uh, thicker. And then uh, I got the decay time at four, 13 milliseconds. So it's really, really quiet. So I'm gonna turn all of these off and we'll go through each one. So. So you can you can kind of hear it like forming the sound, um, and then I'm gonna go through the like the pitch bending that you guys are hearing. So um, see these things right here. So how you can get to here is you um, press this little knob when you're on the normal notes. And then this is the pitch bending, and this is really, really, really useful, guys. Uh, I use this on a lot of my leads. Uh, just having these, like, little, like, and you'll see I put a lot of LFOs on the pitch, to Just uh, having these little small dips in volume and in pitch, and, and you can mess with the detune and stuff, it is incredibly important because well they sound cool first of all but it uh it makes your sound stand out from just standard saws it makes it sound organic and and real and uh like a living kind of thing if you if you vary it a lot and um adds variation in it um it's really important uh in electronic music is not just having just saws with reverb on them, you know, uh, just making them stand out and sound alive. So then we got a. I went over this in my drum sound, so this is like a stereo effect. So uh, this is it without it. This is with it. So you can hear that it. Uh, Definitely just like, let me actually turn on the glue compressor here so that you can see this uh, basically is really strong uh, compressor to bring out the, to bring up the volume and to make the reverb more a part of the sound, more cohesive with the sound. So that way you can hear this guy, this a little better. So this is without the simple delay. And this is with. So if you're listening with headphones or on speakers, you can tell that it uh, it's it sends it to the far ends of the stereo spectrum because it hits the left ear first and then it hits the right ear, and that's how your uh, brain perceives uh, width is the difference between when your one ear hears it and the other hears it. And then I got the OTT. I talked about this earlier, around 38%. Uh, sometimes I'll I'll bring down the uh, the low here, maybe boost one of these or two, just a just a taste. I'm I'm pretty sure I boosted this a little bit, the high end. And then just got EQ here. So this is like where the fundamental is. You can see that little peak. And then this brings out the high end like crazy. Um, 
I don't always do this, uh, like, boost crazy like this, but it works really, really well on this sound. So yeah, and then got the groove compressor. And finally, just gonna end it off with another reverb here. A little bit of pre relay, basically none. And then this one just has a little tail, you know, so. And I only have it at 40%. So that just fills out the space and makes it larger than life. And then got the ghost uh, kick and snare, so the compression, so that it bounces. Actually, let me show you this. This, uh, so I don't know if I did it for the, okay, so I didn't do it for the snare, but for the kick, I have it really high at 50. Uh, that's, that's really high. Usually they do it around. 20 to 30 like here on the snare it's at 22 milliseconds all right now that was leads and saws i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys learned a lot um i hope you guys implement these sounds into your into your your music and i hope you guys use these effects and i hope it you know i hope you guys join us next week uh you can find me on uh soundcloud and facebook and instagram uh, all those links will be posted. Um, yeah, and definitely go check out Bantano Audio. They have some awesome, awesome packs right now. Uh, they have some on sale, I believe. And uh, yeah, you guys should check them out. Really up your game with sound selection. Uh, this has been Brack signing off. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, I believe I'll be talking about bass. I just said it, so I will be talking about bass. Okay, have a great day.